In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Well, welcome everyone today. Uh, it's a good number this morning. This Mass last week was uh, the uh, smallest congregation over the weekend. I think it's, we've, all the congregations, for all the uh, Masses that we have, have all increased, which is really wonderful. It's nice to see so many on a beautiful day here. We're also being joined by 30 people all over the world. And I know there's at least one family from Australia who are here with us. Goodness knows what time it is in Australia. It must be bedtime, wasn't it? So you're very, very welcome. Uh, I'm offering Mass this morning for the soul of Ben Houghton. It would have been his birthday on uh, Friday last week. So uh, he's very dearly remembered. May he rest in peace. Amen. So now, as we come together to celebrate this Mass, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for his mercy and his grace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever's contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading from Scripture. Sue's going to read for us. A reading oh. from the book. It's all right. You are required. <laughs> I apologise. I'll just put the microphone there so we can pick up your voice for the recording. Excuse me. Oh dear. It's got stuck inside. We're making a terrible noise on the uh, recording. There we are. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating, so the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm. Um. Some seed fell into rich soil and produced its crop. Some seed fell into rich soil and produced its crop. You care for the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches. Your river in heaven brims over to provide its grain. Some seed fell into rich soil and its crop. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench its furrows, you level it, soften it with showers, you bless its growth. Some, Some seed fell into rich soil and its crop. 
You crown the year with your goodness. Abundance flows in your steps. In the pastures of the wilderness it flows. Come see that the Jewish soil and produce its crops. The hills are girded with joy, the meadows covered with flocks. The valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy, yes they sing. Some seed fell into rich soil and produced its crop. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God. But creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation, as we know, has been groaning in one great act of giving birth. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit, we too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside, but such a large crowd gathered round him that he got into the boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables. He said, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord. Michael keeps interrupting us, Stephen Paul. <laughs> he doesn't mean to. I'm sorry, technical challenges you know the thing about technology of course it's uh, we say uh, it's a computer error which means that we didn't prepare properly or something it's a good excuse computer error there we are listen anyone who has ears everybody knows that Jesus taught through stories the Gospels of Matthew and Luke in particular are full of these stories. The Good Samaritan, the Prodigal Son, the Wit and the Tares, the Lost Sheep, the Labourers in the Vineyard. I could go on and on and on. Long parables, short parables. Today, it's one of the most famous ones, the parable of the sower. Parables are stories taken from daily life. In Jesus' case, mostly the life of the agriculture and farming and families. Stories which Jesus rarely explains 
yet which are rich in ideas and meanings and messages which go far beyond the elegant simplicity of these stories themselves. In the parables, the glory of nature is a, is a reflection, a glimpse of the eternal glory of heaven. In the parables, the actions and the motives in families and other human relationships lead us to reflect upon the greatness of God's love and his compassion and his forgiveness. The parables go well beyond that first plain, obvious message which we recognize in them. They're richly layered. They're more than examples or allegory. They're a window into the greatness of God. Today, we are his seed, nurtured by the living water which he gives us. We grow, surrounded by thorns and threats and dangers, scorched by ridicule and complacency, choked by a society which understands little and lives even less of the faith we foster and struggle to spread. But he who created the seed and the soil and the sower is also the one who keeps us safe and draws us into his presence. We now affirm together our faith. Please stand in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He ascended into hell. In the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We are encouraged, more than encouraged actually, we are dis discouraged from having been in prayers during these Masses because it prolongs the Mass unnecessarily. There are one or two th very brief petitions I want to mention, pe things that have come up in the past few days. Uh, we pray uh, for and give thanks Phil Burrow's return home following surgery. Maggie Dale, who's had an operation on 8th of July, we pray for her and for her recovery. Pray for uh, Deacon Michael and his family, all of whom have got different illnesses and ailments at the moment, some requiring hospital treatment, so we keep them in our prayers. We uh, give thanks for Callum Pierce's 13th birthday. Callum's become a little bit of an internet star reading at Masses, and uh, we, we give, give him uh, many congratulations today. And we pray also for the Holy Souls, for Michael Sinat, who's had an anniversary of death recently, for Father Georg Ratzinger, the brother of uh, Pope Benedict, Pope, the Emeritus Pope Benedict, who died recently. Also, uh, we pray, of course, today for uh, Ben Houghton, whose birthday would have been on uh, Friday and who's dearly remembered. And we, uh, we uh, share, pray for those who mourn his lost family members who are here with us today. We now continue with the preparation of the gifts.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, William and David, his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Van Houten, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Thomas More, with blessed John Sugar and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. We stand and pray together the prayer Jesus taught us all to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We're unable to exchange the sign of peace, but we can turn and greet one another in the peace and love of Christ, and also those who cross time and space are worshipping with us now. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. But it Christ me to us. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ remains for us in life. The communion antiphon. Whoever meets my flesh and drinks my blood, says the Lord.
Now invite uh, those who are at some distance from us to make their own act of spiritual communion. Uh, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. One of the things I think I've learned uh, during the lockdown and now as we come into the celebration of public masses is how extended our community really is. Uh, We've got people, you you here, which is great to see more again this week, and uh, you're very, very welcome. Of course, it's uh, what the church's life's about, is worshipping together. Also, we've got those who are uh, isolated or shielding uh, and who've taken part in this Mass as well, sometimes by watching online, but also by the contributions that they've made. There's the schools, which are very much part of our parish, and yet we've, um, you know, that, that has been a very difficult thing to maintain as a connection, and that they've contributed to our Mass today also. And, uh, and there's those who've become part of our parish community from all over the place, from uh, um, um, all parts of this country, um, all parts of uh, northern part, all the parts of Staffordshire, North Wales, Lancashire, Cheshire, um, Scotland, uh, Italy, uh, Australia, and they're all part of our community as well. So we're diverse, we're connected, and we support one another in prayer, especially. So it's something to be very grateful for in the midst of what has been a very difficult time. I'm rattling on now, aren't I? Let's uh, move on with the mass now. Let us, let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving efforts, effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we go, the final piece of music, We Are a Shining Light, St. Thomas More, Great Worldly.